there's evidence that suggests that eating soy foods during adolescence when breasts are further developing helps reduce the risk of breast cancer later in life. Huh. Um, having a baby at an age before 30 and certainly before 35 reduces the risk of breast cancer. Breastfeeding your child reduces the risk of breast cancer. So there's actually a lot of things that you'd want to have an awareness of and certainly that you, Lisa, could share and, and, and model for your 10-year-old daughter. Can I, can I, okay, thank you for saying that. I was always under the impression that I should in, avoid soy. So soy has been a very interesting, uh, controversial um, question. I think that um, the evidence is actually coming in quite strong that for women who have had breast cancer, uh, the Shanghai Women's Breast Cancer Survivor Study showed reduced risk of a recurrence. Um, and now we have a trial that was done mostly in Northern California, the LACE, Life After Cancer Epidemiology Study, that also showed reduced risk of a recurrence in women who uh, ate uh, soy foods, especially if they were on tamoxifen. So that's really quite important news that is not broadly known and is different from what we recommended 10 years ago when we told women to avoid soy foods. Uh, Victoria, it's Jay. Could you elaborate a little bit more? This question comes up in my practice almost on a daily basis yeah. because of the natural, if you will, estrogens that exist right. in soy Right. Uh, and I've always, frankly, said moderation, but could you elaborate a little bit more on this study? I think yeah, it's really important. Yeah, absolutely. Um, and I similarly uh, saw many women with breast cancer and for years said, you know, to be on the safe side, let's have you avoid soy. Right. But I think that particularly the, the trial that was done in the United States, Life After Cancer Epidemiology, has uh, really changed the perspective of most people uh, giving advice about diet and breast cancer, where it clearly showed that in women who were on tamoxifen, there was a reduced risk of a recurrence if women ate soy. The, the Asian study, which also shows a reduced risk, the Shanghai uh, study, um, you know, there are differences in the population. It turns out that in the U.S. only 30 to 40 percent of Americans can convert the soy into equal, which is the active form, whereas in Asia, close to 100 percent. So you huh. can't just sort of take all of the Asian data and say, well, it's therefore true for Americans. We have different GI tracts, we have different probiotics, we have different bacterial flora in our GI tract, and so um, that, that U.S. study really made a, a big difference in terms of my recommendations to people. Now, that's not soy protein isolate like in a power bar. It's not fake hot dogs. It's really whole soy foods like edamame, miso, tofu, soy milk, things that are either completely in its whole form or minimally processed. Okay. Wow. That's that. And uh, Victoria, again, when did this study come out and, and what literature do we find this in? Well, both studies have been published over the past um, seven years, I would say. And I don't have the reference right at the top of my fingertips, sure. but they're easily available if you Google them. It's the LACE, Life After Cancer Epidemiology, and also the uh, Shanghai uh, Breast Cancer Survivor Study that showed that. Hi, I'm Dr. Jay Harness, and I want to share with you important information that I believe that every newly diagnosed patient with breast cancer needs to know. I'm a breast cancer survivor. I am a breast cancer survivor. I am a breast cancer survivor. And I want every woman to know about personalized breast cancer treatment and the genomic test. A test that helps guide a woman and her doctor to the best treatment options for her. Pass it on.